It's harvest time, and this year Myanmar rice farmer San San La has won the battle against a dreaded moth that ruined her crop the last two years. Her secret weapon? A free app on her smartphone that advises her on which pesticide to use and how. She's one of tens of thousands of farmers to use apps providing everything from localised weather forecasts and crop prices to chat forums where farmers can discuss seeds or fertilisers. Others might think they don't need this technology and techniques because there were traditional ways their parents showed them. For me, I get to know a lot more things, such as prices, soils and fertilizers, and it helped me a lot. The growing use of apps, though still small, can be put down to Myanmar's smartphone revolution since the country opened up after half a century of military rule. In 2012, smartphone penetration was less than 7%. That's rocketed to 80% last year, opening up a whole new platform for entrepreneurs. Our goal is to make a connection between the farmers and the experts. The farmers can get help from the respective experts directly, whenever they need. More than two-thirds of Myanmar's labour force work in agriculture, and the sector accounts for nearly a third of GDP. But the industry is notoriously low-tech and low-yield, and many farmers are struggling to survive on less than $2 a day. This isn't just about improving people's lives, though, says another app developer. There's more people eating more uh, globally, and, uh, and these climate changes are affecting production. So we need globally those 500 million smallholder farmers to produce more and better, and in the meantime, of course, also getting better income so they can take care of themselves. Similar projects in other developing countries, such as India and parts of Africa, are still reliant on old-style phones and information by SMS. But Myanmar now has the chance to leapfrog that model to become an agricultural trailblazer.